Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5, where we are continuing our exploration of Jewel, and we are expecting to have the encounters in 74 days, 100 days, and 140 days. So, I'm probably going to have to bring my Duna missions back first. And we can... Well, it's a little bit complicated because I've got a mission already in orbit, of course, around Jewel. And I, have to, I do have to pay attention that it doesn't get kicked to a different orbit right now uh, by one of the moons of Jewel. It should be clear of all the moons except perhaps a Paul encounter, like right around here, or possibly a Bop encounter. Those don't seem to be very threatening moons since they're very small and have a very small sphere of influence and the chances that I'm actually going to have those encounters are slim. However, uh, when you're talking about time warping 70 days or so and the orbit's around 5 days long, uh, the, the probabilities tend to even out a little bit more. So, gotta keep an eye on that. I also gotta think about when we need to transfer back to Kerbin from Jewel. And, uh, if you would excuse me for a moment, I am going to check that number. Okay, it's not for a very long time. It's uh, a 49 degree angle, and right now we're actually in line with Kerbin. So Kerbin is going to have to... Uh, it's uh, negative 49 degrees. So Kerbin is going to have to come all the way around and come up behind Jewel before we can transfer back. So lots of time on that one. So they gotta be ha hanging out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let's see if I can get a good angle on this. I don't know. Okay. Uh, no, that's still not even 90 degrees. I think if I could find Kerbin in the midst of all these asteroids. Ah, uh, there it is. Uh, there. Yeah, that's more than 90 degrees. Maybe it's got to be a tight call between the Science Junior launch, which is the most critical of the science launches to Jewel, uh, aside from the manned mission we've already done, and the uh, Duna return. Okay. The Duna return occurs when Kerbin is 75 degrees behind Duna. And if we look at it here, probably it's around 80-ish right now. Uh, we'll, we'll get uh, this jewel, uh, as close to this jewel encounter as possible without getting there. And then we'll transfer the Duna mission. Okay, I think that's as close as I want to get. Uh, that doesn't. That's about 75 degrees, actually. All right. How's our dual mission, manned dual mission, doing? It looks like it's still in its stable orbit. Not kicked out by anything. And I say kicked out. Probably the more dire situation would be if it's actually uh, kicked in. In which case, it would actually be smashing into Jewel, perhaps. That would be the most problematic one. Okay. Right. No, that's not what I wanted. And actually, not the mission lander, I think. I want this one. Alright. So let's go to our Duna mission and uh, get them on their tra trajectory back home. And here they all are, Mackin, Mitgun, and Edball. And unfortunately we only have back facing lights, so it's a little bit dark here. But yeah, we'll just plot for Kerbin. Uh, it should be a uh, burn like this. And it shouldn't take very much Delta V at all. Uh, probably around 600, I think. Deviating pretty far off here, I'm actually surprised. Not too much of an extra burn though, so not very 
inefficient, but... Okay, there we are. Kerbin Periapsis. Not too much of an inclination to correct then. Okay, uh, I think I'll stick to 5,000 kilometers, thereabouts. A mid-course plane change could fix all that, but even if we don't do a mid-course plane change, once they get into the system, we could easily correct that with the Delta V that we have on this thing. So, no worries. Okay, I think uh, we can start the burn here. Yeah. Pretty close to where it needed to be. All our Kerbinauts seem to be looking copacetic. And 34, that's a lot more than I expected. Let me use RCS to try and correct this. Our RCS is quite powerful and we have a lot of it, so no point keeping it in reserve for anything now. Just pressing all the keys to figure out which one can improve my situation. It looks like that's the minimum. So 6,000 kilometers, not too far off from what I was expecting. And we will expect that in 75 days, which is pretty much exactly what the estimated Holman transfer is between Duna and Kerbin. So, looks good to me. So 75 days, keep that in mind. And now we're going to switch to the Science Junior. On second thought, I decided to get them out into interplanetary space first before going to the Science Junior. Best not to have them cross this boundary when I'm not looking but time warping with the Science Junior. I think that could change whatever situation they have. Right now we're in interplanetary space and the periapsis is maintained. Now I can go to the Science Junior. Uh, not Jewel. I know the Science Junior is very close to Jewel now. But it's not there yet. Okay, here is the Science Junior mission. Very green. And if we take a look, we've got our encounter in three days, as expected. Periapsis 6,600 kilometers. Not bad. I think we can just bring it in at this point. Okay, here we are. And so now we get to get it into a tighter orbit around Joule. I guess we're going to aero break with this this uh, assemblage. Were we going to bring it back to Kerbin? Uh, yeah, that's a parachute. So the answer is yes, we were planning to bring it back to Kerbin. Alright, so that's important to know. I think, I, I think I've tested this before, have I? I hope so. Uh, it doesn't look like uh, the thing that could survive without some testing, but I mean impact on the surface, but alright. So we are bringing this stuff back. We're going in the correct direction, so that's nice. Don't have to fix that at all. And in fact, just uh, doing the inclination change. No, it doesn't. Uh, I thought my periapsis had disappeared, but it didn't. All right, so we're going to aero brake with this. Probably don't need to. I think we have plenty of fuel to just do a burn to orbit. But we do want to save the fuel for the return trip, so probably safer to do this. Trying to get as close to the plane of the system as possible too. Otherwise we're going to have to make significant inclination changes to meet the moons and those will be costly. Now if I remember correctly the Man mission used something like something even below 115 maybe we probably won't get the very fortunate encounters that we did with the man mission I don't know how likely those you know like the double encounter of uh, Val and Lath. I don't know how likely that is it could be that the 
moons of Jule are placed in such a way as to make that likely. I haven't calculated that out. I do incident incidentally have the phase angle for transfer between all of Jule's moons. So if we really wanted to do Holman transfers between them, that could be doable. But those require getting into orbit around each of the moons first. And I, we're planning flybys only. So no point thinking about that. So how much will this cost us? 17.3 meters per second. And judging from the... Oh, are we time warping? No. So I'm trying to turn, but I can't. So that means we don't have a reaction wheel on this. Is that correct? Seems that way. Okay. So RCS on. Oh, we better keep a handle on that. Could easily run out of RCS. And we obviously need it for maneuvering. Alright, five hours. Oh, uh, we can do uh, Science Junior from out here. Let's observe the materials bay. Okay, I'm just going to keep the data, uh, painting rockets with the glow, as usual. Okay, that's close enough. Uh, can't use RCS. Uh, of course, with such a small burn, RCS would be useful, but we need to keep that for maneuvering. Using the engine gimbling to turn. Okay, good enough. It's time warp to stabilize, and let's see what the... Oh, that's not quite right. Let's see. Making very tiny bursts of the engine. Uh, 107 is a little bit too low. Okay, well now we need RCS, and... Okay, oh, whoa, why are you... Stop that, stop. Oh, why is it changing it while I'm... Stop. Uh, okay, SAS is probably to blame. Right. I was changing it while I was trying to get it at the right number. Wow, that took a lot of RCS. Hmm. Okay. Okay, it's drifting. That's good, actually. Take SAS off, let it drift. I want it to drift close to its retrograde vector so that we can orient that direction for the air braking around Joule. SAS probably wouldn't be able to stabilize it anyway, but better to take it off just so it doesn't try. Oh, now it's 93 kilometers. A fidgety thing, isn't it? Mm, take SAS off. No, no, uh, actually, let me not do that right now. Let's get closer before trying to adjust our approach to Jewel. We can't even see Jewel right now. It's 14 days away. Oh, speaking of which... I think we've got enough time before these come in. I thought it was... This one was coming in in 75 days, this was one was coming in in 100 days, and that one was 140. So 14 days should still be within the time frame before that one comes in. Okay, now we can see Jewel. Even the twinkle of some of its moons. So, 93 is definitely not going to work out for us, and we can't turn around 
to point at prograde because that will cost way too much RCS. I'm going to take SAS off. I'm going to try an RCS burn to correct this. Or not. It's costing way too much. Okay, uh, better... Yeah, let's start ourselves drifting towards the prograde vector. And as we approach the prograde vector, turn on SAS and get ready to burn. And once we start burning, it'll stabilize because of the gimbling of the engine. Get my marker on there. Oh, this is the wrong way. Huh. I would think that the prograde vector would actually lift my orbit, but it doesn't. It actually brings it down. Why? That's strange. Um, well, I guess there are situ situations where that would happen. Very interesting. Okay. So, just going back to the retrograde grade vector, not touching the RCS. Gonna have to use that sparingly. Let's try some thrust here. Whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, stop. So both the prograde vector and the retrograde vector lower my periapsis. Ha. Ah. That lowers it even more. So you have to go the other way. Um, better to use thrust to turn rather than RCS. What I want to do is I'm going to take SAS off. And I'm going to start turning towards... Okay, that's too high. Oh, that's fine though. We can, we'll, we'll drop it down at the retrograde vector. That'll stabilize the craft at that marker. Okay, that suits me. Let's see how this does. It's probably supposed to be lower than this, but uh, I think we'll still get into orbit at this altitude. And we're, at, we're actually going slower than the other mission. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, maybe I should check air braking calculator just in case, because we're going so much slower than the manned mission. That's why we got here 75 days later. Um, nope, I remembered wrong. Air braking calculator wants me to go to 106 kilometers. Okay. Well, uh, wait. Yeah, alright, I think I've put all the numbers in right. I'll be content with 108. I want to play it safe. Alright, uh, well we've got our approach to Jewel. Let's get there and get into orbit. You know what would be fun? Is if we could have this craft rendezvous with the manned mission, have the manned mission pick out the science from these science juniors uh, to return it back home there. I do want to try out if returning this back home would work though. But that would be a fun alternate mission. I'll think about that. But that seems unnecessary obviously since we plan to bring this back home. And while it would be a fun EVA exercise, 
It's, uh, I, I still want to see if I can bring this back home, so probably not what I want to do. Okay. Yes, we can get closer before retracting the solar panels. Okay, I think the orientation change is uh, very, very indicative of when you should change to a re-entry posture. Uh, we're obviously, obviously tilted wrong. Let's see now. Um, okay, a slight, slightish burn to get us turning in the right direction. Take SAS off. Do you suppose we're close to Jewel yet? Let's see. Yeah, in space near Jewel. The computer gave an odd report no matter how many times we sent the request. Open the sample bay doors. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't let you do that, was the only reply. The doors did open very promptly when we opened the fuse box panel. Very curious. Okay, so a 2001 Space Odyssey reference there. Uh, I, I don't remember ever seeing this one before. Have I never done a material study in space near Jewel? I guess not. I think I've seen it on other people's streams uh, or videos, but I don't remember seeing it myself. It's a little bit complicated to sort those memories out, though. Okay, it changed me to surface velocity. I don't actually think I need that. Let's just see how far Time Warp will let me continue before it changes to physical time warp. Okay. The atmosphere itself should push me to the retrograde vector the rest of the way, as it is currently doing. Might as well use SES to stabilize, though I don't think it's got any any ability to, any torque to keep things pointed in the right direction anyway. Okay. Not exactly the best combination of colors, the orangish red, red of the flames and the green of the craft and jewel. Uh, definitely I mean, a deeper red would uh, work, but this isn't a very good color combination. Okay, that's us in orbit around Jewel. Yeah. Always collapses very quickly, so you're worried that you're going to crash into Jewel itself, but then it eventually stabilizes. But we're 36. Well, oh yeah, yeah, but I, I, this is different from, I didn't, oh darn. I left it at the default on, uh, on the air braking calculator, which is 2,000 kilometers on the apoapsis. That's closer than I strictly needed to be around Jewel. Oh. Yeah, this is not good. I really wanted a 20,000 kilometer apoapsis, not a 2,000 kilometer apoapsis. Very much missed out on that. And is 2,000 kilometers actually crashing in a jewel? Uh oh. 
Well, no, 2,000 shouldn't crash into you. There's 2,000 above the surface, not above the center of it. Still, this is not what I wanted at all. Uh, probably the 115 would have worked better. But if our mission isn't in jeopardy, I think we can boost out a uh, apoapsis, and so I won't have to turn around. You see, if you're retrograde at periapsis, you'll be prograde at apoapsis, and so I can just burn prograde there, and that'll boost my orbit out this direction, if there is an encounter to be had in that case. I'm gonna set Lath as the t initial target, and let's just see. Uh, still descending on this side though, so it's going to change. Will Leif make a uh, full... No, it's going to be on the opposite side. L let me go further and go to Val instead. Let's see where it's going to be. It's going to be off the side there as well. Tylo is better for kicking us out to the higher moons. So maybe we're just going to have to get into a stable orbit around Jewel. That's going to cost a lot. See, uh, because the orbit is so close to Jewel, these, uh, this maneuver is costing quite a lot of Delta V. Okay, rather than go all the way with this, I think I'm going to just boost out of Jules' atmosphere for now. There's no point boosting to a circular orbit when this'll do. And we can figure out where we need to go to transfer to Lathe, let's say. Let's just aim for Lathe first. Mm hmm. So here, Lath will kick us out to a higher orbit, which is nice, but it's not quite right. Where's our? Uh, here's our ascending node. Okay. Oh, we really don't want to do an inclination change there. Let's say we do it along the way rather than... So let's make an encounter. Wow, that really kicks me out. It's a good encounter right there. But it doesn't really tell me where the inclination change will be. I mean the ascending or descending node. Okay, it looks like this is going up. Yeah. So, probably have to pull down here. Ah, there we go. This is not the best place to do that. Huh. Maybe we should just do it around Lathe. Or maybe right before we encounter... Oh, that didn't do very nice things at all. Poo. Okay, uh, I'm just going to go with this. Very costly maneuver. But it'll at least get us our first planet. Uh, moon. And it'll also get us both the high and the low over lathe, so that's important as well. Okay, 53 minutes to that maneuver. Okay, I think it's time to start turning SAS off. Now, which direction should I go? Um, clearly, this is mostly going to be a prograde thing. 
So probably over here somewhere. Uh, RCS on. Give it a little burst in this direction. Take it off. We do have an antenna on here, so if for some reason we run out of fuel before filling up all these science juniors, we'll just transmit what information we can back, I think, depending on what the balance of science is. We'll have to do a cost-benefit analysis of some kind as we start getting closer to running out of fuel. I say that of course because of how costly this particular burn is. Still got fuel in the external tanks. We've got a pretty big tank here for the return journey. So it's possible, I mean, it's likely that that would be enough for the entire return from Jewel. We can exhaust this tank. We can probably not go so quickly, otherwise we might not make our Leif encounter as intended. The estimated burn time is just weird. Coming up on the end of our burn here, and that's probably good enough, let's see. Uh, no, not quite. So it's the last bit of the burn that's very important, of course. Ooh, this doesn't seem to be turning out right at all. Hmm. Let's see what we... Oh, okay, it's like that, is it? Uh, so a little bit more prograde. Let's just keep burning. There we go. And do we get any closer? No. It's higher than I thought it would be, but it's okay. Now, let's see if we can plot a maneuver to make this a little bit better for a Lathe encounter, not a Lathe encounter, a Val encounter. Or a Tylo encounter, for that matter. We've got we're going to be kicked into an orbit that is capable of both. It looks like. Whoa! What is? Where did that come from? No, I don't want a four thousand. What the heck? What? How can doing nothing? Oh, is it saying that? Uh, that the influence of lathe is worth 4,000 meters per second of delta V? That's impressive. Okay, um, well I'll, I'll believe it. Let, let's, let's get into a lathe encounter before trying to apply anything else then. Because I guess if I add maneuver here, yeah, it's got the same sort of thing. So yeah, lathe. Very powerful little moon there. Do not underestimate Lathe. Oh, uh, before I do all this and get into the swing of, of all these sorts of encounters, uh, I think they're far enough. Let me just check on... That seems to be orbiting nicely. Okay, let's continue.